Well, um, restriction enzymes occur naturally in bacteria, and bacteria use them themselves to break up DNA, foreign DNA that, that infects bacterial cells. What we use them for is um, we purify these enzymes from the bacteria, and we use them to do the same sort of thing, but in the test tube. DNA natural DNA molecules are extremely long and extremely complicated. They're, they're like, a, like a cassette tape, with, which goes on for you know, a very, very long distance. And, and the, the DNA itself is a very thin molecule containing, um, along its length, genes. In order to, to analyze DNA and to, to isolate individual genes, we need to break it up. And, and this is what restriction enzymes are used for. They, they're used to, to cut DNA up into convenient sized pieces that we can then use to, to subclone and to put into bacteria and to, to study. In the absence of DNA, they have a kind of open structure, like, a, like an open hand or a pair of open hands. And when they, when they encounter the DNA, they tend to wrap around it. And then they can slide up and down the, the, the DNA for a certain distance without detaching. Restriction enzymes are also used as a, as a quick way to identify DNA molecules, to characterize them, because a restriction enzyme will recognize a particular sequence within a DNA molecule, and each time the sequence occurs, the molecule gets, gets cut. So any particular DNA molecule will get cut into a series of fragments the sizes and number of which are characteristic of the, that particular DNA molecule that you're dealing with. The result is that, that you can use an enzyme. If, if you want to check a DNA molecule you're dealing with, you can use a restriction enzyme to do a quick digest, and you can electrophoresis the digested DNA on an agarose gel and produce a, a restriction fragment, the characteristic restriction fragment pattern. In the early days of molecular biology, uh, it, it when restriction enzymes came along, it, it suddenly became possible to take bits of DNA from any organism and, and put, these, put these into a vector and put them into E. coli and study that particular DNA. And, and this, this was a new form of genetics, um, and it was clear to me that this was... Um, this is going to be extremely important, not only for the study of molecular biology, but also for, for the study of medicine. But what would be necessary would be um, to move this field forward, we would need not only a lot of restriction enzymes, but we'd need uh, pure restriction enzymes, and we'd need to be able to make them in, in, in quantity. So I, I got involved with restriction enzyme research um, at the level of trying to overexpress their genes, trying to clone their genes from the bacteria that, that made them naturally, put them into E. coli, get them overexpressed, make little E. coli factories that made a lot of these proteins. The object was, in those days, to, to improve the tools that, um, that scientists would have at their disposal. I tell you, the, the way this sort of developed was each restriction enzyme recognizes a particular sequence of bases on DNA, and, and it cuts the DNA at those positions. But but it ignores everything else. And, and uh, a typical restriction enzyme might recognize a six-base sequence. Now, there are, there are over 4,000 different six-base sequences in DNA. A restriction enzyme will recognize one of those sequences, but ignore all 3,999 others. Some restriction enzymes recognize eight-base sequences. And there are 64,000 possible eight-base sequences. So these enzymes will ignore 63,999 different DNA sequences, but bind to just one. Now, this is an extraordinary selectivity, and we want to know how it occurs. I mean, for sure, um, uh, it, 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 it's a natural process. It's going on in bacteria. It's, this sort of selectivity is probably going on in other organisms, include, including ourselves. We want to know the molecular basis for it.